The Curry Extreme 70 is the undisputed king of crate axles and is simply the strongest high pinion bolt-in axle available for the Jeep JL platform. Built to the legendary Curry standard and loaded with exclusive features, including a radius bottom center section, which allows for more ground clearance, as well as a replaceable AR400 hardened steel skid plate that resists deformation and gouging. The massive 10 and inch gear set is paired to 4340 chromoly axles that are available in either 35 or 40 spline configurations. Plus an integrated ring gear load bolt, which minimizes deflection and maximizes gear mesh under high torque loads. Engineered to use some of your factory JL brake components, the Extreme 70 allows your choice of six or eight lug wheel bolt patterns, which makes the Curry Extreme 70 the clear winner for both competition and recreational use. Let's begin with the installation of the Curry Extreme 70 axle by lifting the vehicle up off the ground to remove the wheels and tires. With the wheels and tires set aside, raise and secure the vehicle at a good working height. Next, support the factory axle with either a good axle stand or a set of heavy duty jack stands. Then lower the vehicle to unload the suspension's hardware, which allows for easy removal of the components. Beginning on the driver's side of the vehicle, using an 18 mm wrench and socket, remove the lower portion of the shock at the housing. Then follow the same procedure to the passenger side shock in the same fashion. For this install, we intend on swapping to a different pair of shocks. However, you may reuse your factory shocks if need be. In order to access the upper portions of the shocks, there are three 8 mm head screws that hold the rear splash apron in place that will need to be removed to expose the upper shock hardware. With a clear shot at the upper shock hardware, remove the bolt that holds the shock to the frame using an 18 mm socket. Be sure to hang on to the factory hardware for reuse. Repeat the same upper shock hardware removal process on the passenger side before moving on to the next step. Back to the driver's side of the differential housing, locate and remove the rear sway bar link rods by using a 3 quarter inch socket and a 5 8 wrench, followed by the same action on the passenger side before lifting up both rods and securing them out of the way until the new axle is set into place. The rear track bar is the next item we'll remove by using a 21 mm socket at the housing's bracket. Once the hardware has been removed, lift the bar out of the bracket and up to the exhaust where it needs to be tied to the exhaust so it won't interfere with the new axle installation. Remove the factory vent hose from the housing, as well as the brake line brackets, which require a 13 mm wrench, followed by the ABS sensor that is held in place by an 8 mm fastener. To remove the driver's side brake caliper from the housing, an 18 mm socket is used on both of the fasteners that hold it in place. Afterwards, a zip tie is used to secure the caliper up and away from the work area. The same process of removing the brake line brackets, ABS sensor, and brake caliper were performed on the passenger side using a 13 mm wrench, 8 mm socket, and 18 mm socket. Don't forget to tie up the brake caliper up and out of the way to prevent any damage. Locate the parking brake cable hook on the front side of the driver's side brake backing plate and then remove it from the parking brake eyelet. Then using a pair of pliers, compress the cable housing to allow the housing to pass through the parking brake cable mount on the housing. Repeat the same process on the passenger side. For the removal of the factory drive shaft, a set of Torx bits allows the removal of the eight fasteners at the differential yoke and all eight fasteners at the transfer case. To ease the removal of the rear coil springs, lift the vehicle up to release any tension on the coil springs. Next, remove both the driver's and passenger side coils and set them aside for now. Using a 21 mm socket along with a 22 mm wrench, Remove both the driver's side and passenger side control arms and allow them to rest out of the workspace. If equipped, 
Remove the bump stop mounts from both sides of the housing by using a half inch socket and wrench combo. Be sure to set these aside along with the fasteners for later use. Find the upper fasteners that hold the upper control arms in place and with the help of a 21 millimeter socket, remove the bolts on both sides of the axle housing. Lift the upper control arms up and away from the housing to allow for a path for the factory axle to be removed from under the vehicle. As you can tell, by the operation of securing the components that will be reused in this installation during the removal task, it's allowed for a clear and open space for the Extreme 70 axle installation as it easily is wheeled underneath the JL's chassis. The first step in the undertaking of installing the Extreme 70 axle is to bring in the upper control arm and align it into the upper control arm bracket on the housing, followed by threading in the 21mm bolt through the bracket and arm. Finish off the job by installing the factory nut plate to the 21mm bolt to secure the arm in place. Repeat this process on both sides, but leave them loose until the lower arms are in place. Now bring in the lower control arms into the axle's brackets and thread in the 21mm bolt through the bracket and control arm, followed by the 22mm nut that holds the bolt in place. Repeat the task on the opposite side, and don't be afraid to use a mallet to persuade the fastener to slip through the brackets. With all four control arms set into place, along with the factory hardware loosely threaded together, now it's time to tighten down the fasteners to spec. Locate and install the bump stop extensions by reusing the 5 16 fasteners with a half inch socket and wrench on both sides of the axle. Reuse the factory spring isolators, but pay close attention on how the locating pin docks into the hole found on the coil spring pad mount on both sides of the axle. The same attention to detail for the upper locating pin of the stock spring isolators needs to be practiced for proper coil spring location on the frame side before sliding the lower portion of the spring over the coil spring mount on the housing. Installation of the parking brake cable is done exactly how the manufacturer intended, as each one of the cable's housings is simply pushed through the mount on the axle until a firm click is heard. Finish off the parking brake cable installation by installing these dog bone extensions that will assist hooking the cable into the parking brake eyelet to offset the wider axle track width. The dog bone is held in place with a nut and bolt on the outside, while the inside is held in place by the parking brake's cable extension. Adjust the cable as necessary. With the coil spring set properly into place, go ahead and lower the vehicle to ride height. The factory brake calipers are slid over the brake rotors without the hassle of bleeding the brake fluid. Tighten down the 18 mm head size fasteners that hold the calipers into place. On the driver's side, discover the provision for the factory ABS sensor and secure the fastener by using an 8mm socket. Reroute the factory brake line bracket into the driver's side mount found on the housing. Tighten down the fastener that keeps it secure with a 13mm wrench. Before moving on to the next step, take a minute to see if the flexible brake lines are free and loose. If needed, lube the mount and adjust the line until it has enough slack. Repeat the ABS sensor and brake line bracket installation sequence by using an 18mm socket on the ABS fastener and a 13mm wrench on the brake line bracket. Clip the zip tie that was holding the sway bar link rod out of the way and locate the tab on the housing where the heim joint slides through. Tighten down the fasteners using a 3 quarter inch socket and a 5 8 wrench. Duplicate the same activity on the other side before moving on. Locate the vent fitting on the differential cover and remove the shipping cap. Then slide the rubber vent hose over the fitting until it bottoms out over the bar blocks of the fitting. Find the oil fill plug and remove it to fill the axle with oil. This application calls for 2.5 quarts of oil of 85 by 140 weight, in which we recommend using our private blend of oil that may be purchased from our website. Double check the oil level by using the built-in dipstick before snugging down the oil fill plug. For this application, a set of king shocks were placed on both frame mounts where the hardware was snugged down with an 18mm socket. 
Next, we concluded that the factory splash aprons needed to be modified to allow the shock reservoirs enough clearance for operation. We trimmed out the aprons and installed them back on the vehicle using the factory 8mm head screws. For tuning purposes, the Curry Extreme 70 axle housing offers multiple positions to mount the lower portions of your shocks. This application called for the lowest position on the bracket for the lower portion of the set of King shocks to be mounted using an 18mm wrench and socket to hold them to the housing brackets. For this application, the tire size was increased from a 37 inch tall tire to these massive 40 inch Nitto tires mounted on a set of KMC wheels. Now that the vehicle is on the ground, we'll address the track bar. Start by measuring from a fixed point on the frame to a fixed point on the tire, and then repeat this process on the other side. The difference in these measurements will tell you how much you need to move the frame over the axle for proper track bar adjustment. There are various methods, but we have chosen to use a ratchet strap attached to the frame in the differential housing to achieve our adjustment. Keep in mind, you may have to move your vehicle in the opposite direction of what we have illustrated here. With the frame centered between the tires, adjust the rear track bar as necessary so the bolt will line up and install freely. Reinstall the factory track bar bolt and nut plate and torque to spec. You may now tighten the track bar jam nut by using an inch and a half inch wrench and then release the ratchet strap. In order to measure for a new driveline, start by lifting the vehicle up in the air and measure the distance between the transfer case driveline yoke to the front edge of the drive shaft yoke while the suspension sits at full droop. Next, lower the vehicle back on all four tires and load the suspension. Then remeasure the same points at ride height. Next, grab a notepad and record both measurements to a driveline specialist. This will give your driveline specialist the proper information to build the right driveline to fit your application. This application called out to convert the factory CV style driveline to a traditional slip yoke style driveline. First step is to remove and replace the transfer case yoke with one that will accept a slip yoke style driveline. Be sure to use a thread locking liquid on all four driveline fasteners. Slide in the new driveline onto the new transfer case yoke. Finish by tightening down all four bolts with a 7 16 12 point wrench. Next, slide the slip yoke side of the driveline onto the pinion yoke and install the supplied U-bolts over the universal joint cups. Tighten down the U-bolt nuts with a half inch wrench. For more information, check us out on CurryEnterprises.com or look us up on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube.